Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Tuesday, December 29, 2009. This morning I'd like to go through an interesting topic, method wrappers. It's a little package put together by Refactory Inc., Don Robertson, John Brandt, and I'd like to show how they can be useful. And if you look down here at this little script I've written, this shows how I'm going to use the wrappers I'm going to bring in and experiment with. I've got a wrapper that's just going to count the number of calls to this method. It's a pre-built wrapper in their example package called Count Method Wrapper. All it does is count the number of calls made to a method. Kind of useful if you think you might have overhead. For instance, you think a method ought to be called once for every action you take. If it's called more than once, this is one easy way of finding out. First, to get that stuff loaded in, you want to go to the Parcel Manager. And once that's up, you want to go to the Directories tab and scroll down to the Contributed section. and that's down here under contributed and down here under the M's you'll find method wrappers. Select this and then bring in the examples because this brings in the example I'm going to use. Okay once that's in you can close this. Let's go to the browser and take a look at what I've got. So I'm going to go down to the method wrapper code and here's the base. You've got method wrapper and the comment here explains what it does. It allows you to do things like add before methods and after methods so that you can wrap a given method in a before block and an after block and just have code that will execute before something happens and afterwards and you can just do things like count the number of times a method gets called lots of interesting things. Down here are some examples you can do the count method just count the number of times a method has been called and you notice the way this does this under evaluating is it puts in this count that counts the number of times it's executed so what I'm going to do is bring up bottom feeder because this is a bottom feeder development image and the easiest way to go through this example is to use that so I'll select a feed here and now I've got all these updates that I can look at so let's go ahead and install a wrapper. What we're going to do is install a count wrapper and we're going to both create it on feed item selection changed which is the selection here and then what we're going to do is install that so let's do that there. Now we'll come up here and I will select something and I will unselect it and then I will select something and I will unselect it. So in theory since I did four clicks I should have four things so let's go ahead and look at that count wrapper and you see there it's telling me what it's on and I can look, go ahead and look at the count and sure enough it's four. So in fact in this case I don't have any overhead it's doing exactly what I think it should do. So let's uninstall that. Go down here to do uninstall. Let's do a slightly more complicated one. What I'm going to do is leave this running and I'm going to create a brand new one called a before after wrapper. Now what I'm going to do is bring in a parcel because I don't want to have to have you watch me type code. Okay, with this in, let's go over here and we'll find my method wrappers, which I just brought in. I've got this before after wrapper, and you'll notice that it is descended from method wrapper. It's also index type as objects instead of none. This is important because of the way it's built. So then all you really need to do is put in an after method and a before method, and then it will execute that code whenever a method's about to be entered and about to be exited. Whatever is going to go in here, that's what will happen. In this case, I'm just putting in transcript show. So what I'm going to do is both create this and install it. And having done that, I should now get my before method and after method every time I select on something here. So I'll select and I'll deselect. And in addition to all these tidy errors, because I'm experimenting with something that's not working, you notice that I'm seeing after, before, before, after. So it is executing that code, not doing anything useful except dumping to the transcript, but I am getting before and after notification every single time I do something. So that's an interesting use of method wrappers. You can install before and after actions, and then this is useful mostly not for coding, I think, in runtime, but highly useful for testing, certainly, and you can find out exactly what's going on in code with both the counting wrapper, the before and after. You can modify systems. You can get in there and experiment with something that you don't have source code access to, which I think is where they wrote this thing for initially anyway, where you don't have the ability or inclination to change someone else's code. You can at least muck with it kind of indirectly through these wrappers. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with small talk.